Angel Michael, the strongest angel. There are quite a number of interesting things to know about the angel named Michael. It is no doubt that the angels are very much real, and although we don't see them much in the physical realm, they are very much alive in the spiritual. Most angels in the Bible are very much alive in the spiritual. Now, most angels in the Bible have the form of man, and not all of them have wings, contrary to many notions. There are different caters of angels. There are cherubim, seraphim, the archangels, thrones, dominions, regular angels, and so on. However, it should arouse your curiosity to know that only three angels' names are mentioned in the Bible. Angel Michael, Angel Gabriel, and Lucifer. In this video, we would examine a very interesting angel, the angel Michael, and what is peculiar about him. The first major place, the role and personality of the one most known angel in the Bible is in Daniel chapter 10. Here he came to help Angel Gabriel deliver his message to Daniel. Angel Gabriel was to deliver a message to Daniel, but he was withheld by the prince of Persia for 21 days. And we see that only until Angel Michael had arrived to help him could he break through to deliver the message to Daniel later in Daniel chapter 12. Now the Bible records that Michael is the great prince who stands guard over Israel. His great strength is depicted through every place where he is mentioned in the Bible. What are the major highlights of the angel Michael? His name. Michael in Greek means who is like El. Amazing, right? <laughs> very amazing. Considering the fact that Michael is a very strong angel. Indeed, who is like our God? Who can withstand his strength, his power and his might? He's an archangel and in some situations, he's called Angel Michael or Saint Michael the Archangel. Number two, the peculiarity of his role. Aside from the fact that he was amongst the only three angels whose names were mentioned in the Bible, the Bible records so many angels who are portrayed as messengers of God, being sent on errands. However, each time we see the character of Michael, He's either fighting or opposing evil forces and principalities. His role is always so important, such that without him, things wouldn't go well. Now, just in the case of Angel Gabriel and Daniel, in fact, paintings usually describe him as having a sword and wearing armor. The reason isn't far-fetched. He's a warrior, and a great one at that. So while you're at it, kindly like, share, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Number three, his title. Michael is referred to as a prince who stands guard over the people of Israel. In Daniel chapter 12, verses one, it says, and at that time shall stand Michael, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, and every one that shall be found written in the book. This scripture happened in Daniel's last vision, in which an angel describes how the last day would be for the Jews. It shows that in the time of peril, angel Michael would stand for the people and would be a guard over them. The Bible doesn't explicitly state what would be guarded, but that he would be a guardian. Point number four. Michael is the only mentioned angel referred to as an archangel. We see the title of an archangel in Jude chapter 1 verses 9, where he was contending for the body of Moses. The archangel means chief angel or chief servant. However, Michael was referred to as one of the archangels, meaning that there wouldn't be another archangel whose name wasn't mentioned. Now the words he said throughout the Bible and the times he was mentioned, Michael only said four words although there are three in Greek, but they are translated to be four words. The word spoken to Satan was, the Lord rebuke you. The only words he spoke in the entire scripture was in opposition to Satan. And that was words of warfare. In Jude chapter 1 verses 8, 
Yet Michael the archangel, when contending for the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, and he does not bring him against the brazen accusation. But he said, The Lord rebuke thee. Now this makes it very apparent that he was one of those angels who could boldly face Lucifer and defeat him. Point number six. Michael is the head of the battalion of angels. Michael is portrayed as a great captain of angelic armies, constantly in aid of the children of Israel. History claims that he is the helper of the church's armies against the heathens and the evil attacks of the devil. Not only is he a very strong angel, or arguably the strongest angel, he also has angels who take orders from him. According to Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 to 9, the Bible says, And there was war in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels. Verses 8 says, And they prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. Verse 9 says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. We also see that the angel Michael has a very important role to play at the end time events. It's interesting to note that it's been argued that the angel Apostle Paul was referring to in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall arise first. It has been noted that this archangel has been argued to also be Angel Michael. Point number seven, his sex. It should be noted that just like every other angel, the sex of Angel Michael isn't known to us since we know that there are neither female nor male angels seeing that they are spirits. So the use of him for the angel simply because he was depicted as a warrior isn't true. And depicting the angel as a hero wouldn't be correct either because angels do not have gender. Number 8. Despite his enormous strength, he is subject to God. As said earlier, there are different caters of angels, even the seraphim and the cherubim who have been seen as the highest class of angels, they all still got their power from one source, and that's God. In the same manner, Angel Michael, with his strength, has God as his supreme authority. Another interesting thing, however, is that it's not just God. Even the believer man has authority over angels. The Bible records that they are ministering spirits. Man is in the God class. He's one with God because of God's spirit in him, but his angels are not. Now the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1 verses 5 to 7, it says, And again, he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, and he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. And the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. Thus the believer shouldn't worship an angel irrespective of its authority. Revelation chapter 19 verses 10 says, And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and thy brethren that have the same testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And what should be done with the knowledge of this strong angel? We'll look at it further, but before that, kindly like, share, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Point number eight, an assurance in your heart. Now, the knowing of this should create in your heart the assurance that there are capable angels guarding the children of God, that God is actively involved in the safety and protection of his children. Let me tell you a short story. I remember the general overseer of one of the most popular churches in the whole of the world, the Redeemed Christian Church of God. He told us how he was in a plane some time ago, and the pilot suddenly informed them of an emergency that the plane was not in a good state, and they were going to land at the nearest airport. Per adventure, they were able to make it there. Now everyone in the plane was scared, and people began to call him their God. Now, all the while, this man of God was communicating with God and asking him what was going on. Luckily, he was seated near the window. He looked down and he saw that a big angel was supporting the plane with its hands, 
till they got where they were going to safely. Of course, I'm not saying that the angel was Michael, but it's the fact that God creates his angels for the service of his children, and you can be intentional in increasing your consciousness about the workings of angels around you. Number 9. That your prayers would receive answers. Just the same way Angel Michael came to the rescue of Angel Gabriel, if need be, and at any time there's such a need, you can be sure that God has capable hands that can be sent against the kingdom of darkness. Or maybe I should rephrase it. You can be sure that you have capable hands who can wrestle demons such as the Prince of Persia when you need to discharge angels on an assignment. Isn't this beautiful? Now, I hope you learned something. If you did learn something about this strong angel, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you for listening. God bless you.